Hey everyone and welcome to my second of two videos on this, the Nikon FM2. In the first video we looked at what everything was and I told you what everything was. In this video I'm going to actually show you how to use all of the things that this camera can do, explain how they're used, and then we'll go through the process of actually taking a photo with this camera. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to mount and unmount a lens on the Nikon FM2. We have a lens on here right now. Here is the lens release button, so we're going to push it into the camera's body, rotate clockwise, and we can remove the lens. Now we can either set this off to the side and put a different lens on the camera. There we go. So we can change up the types of lenses we want to use in the same roll of film for different effects and things like that. And that's how you change a lens. Uh, to help guide the lens when you're putting it on, you can either you can look for the focusing scale marker right here that indicates what the lens is focused at and just line that up with a white dot like I'm incapable of. There we go. And then turn it counter or anti-clockwise until it clicks in place and you'll hear a little click. And you know you have it on correctly if you can't move the lens without pushing that button down. Next thing we're going to do is load and unload film. So to, to load film we have to open up the camera first. And you'll notice we can't just pull up on the film re release knob to open it. We're going to unlock it by rotating this dial, pull and lift, and the film back will pop open. Next we're going to take the film, drop it into the uh, film cassette chamber right here, and push the film knob back in place. Now we're going to pull out a leader, feed it into the film take-up spool, just like that, just like that. There we go. Now we're going to advance. And now at this point, what you'd want to do is close your film back. And in real life, this is where you'd, you'd now advance the film three times, making sure that as you do it, the film rewind knob is rotating. This rotating knob lets you know that the film is being taken up because this has to rotate as the film's being taken off the spool and you'll advance until you get to frame one. Now you're ready to go. In real life, you would shoot through your entire roll of film, rewind it entirely, and then open the back. Film is one and done, so if you expose it to light by doing what I'm about to do, you will ruin the film. But I want to show you what's happening inside your camera as you take a picture. So when you activate the shutter, the shutter curtains will trigger, and now you advance the film. And what happens is that the film is taken up through the camera and onto the film take-up spool there. Now here you can see the film guide pin right here and the film guide rails that help, keep, help everything continue to move through. And you can see where the film plate was, uh, would sandwich on the film to help keep it flat on plane. Now once you've finished your roll of film, again keeping your film door closed the whole time, you'd push the film re wind release here on the bottom and now you can start rewinding your film holding the film rewind release down and as you rewind it normally the film back is in there so you don't have to hold it with your finger but as you rewind the film it's going to take it back into the cassette and you'll want to listen for this sound that's the sound of the film coming off of the film take-up spool letting you know you're almost done rewinding it you'd also want to rewind the film cassette and leader entirely into the cassette. Uh, I'm using this film again later for other videos, so I'm not going to do that. Next thing we're going to do is change the battery on this. This camera uses two A76 batteries. Typically, you would want to use a coin to open up the battery chamber, but I don't have one on me. So I'm going to use a key. A key can work as well too, although it's a little bit more fiddly because typically on a keychain. So we have two batteries in there right now. These are the two A76 batteries. So if you look on your battery, you can see that there are, is an indication of how the battery, ah, how the batteries are supposed to be inserted. Uh, you put them with the positive contact facing away from the metal plate and a reminder of the types of battery you're supposed to use, 1.5 volt times two. So to load the battery, we're gonna take our two little a76 batteries and put them in with the positive terminal facing away. So when you put the battery in, 
you should be able to read the text when you hold it like this. Next we're going to insert it into the camera. And again, using a, a coin, or in this case a key, you're just going to uh, screw in the batteries into the compartment until it goes. Now that should be a really easy procedure. So if the camera puts up any resistance as you're trying to put the batteries in, that's a sign that you might be cross-threading the batteries, and you'll want to back out the, um, the, the battery chamber and try putting it in again. So here we are looking at the top of the camera to talk about how to use the flash. You can put a flash in the hot shoe right here, or you can connect it to the PC port right here. And what, uh, to use the flash, you would want to set your shutter speed to 1 2 50th or slower. So anything from, from bulb up to 1 2 150th of a second will work for flash use. So let's talk about why that is. Uh, so, so shutter curtains, in this, in this camera, the curtains travel from top to bottom, but that would be, I can't quite reach my hands like that. So um, in cameras, focal plane cameras like this, the curtain sits in front of the film, and what happens is when you take a picture, the curtain opens and then it closes. There's a second one that closes, and then when you advance the film, they reset like that. Now, shutter speeds aren't increased by the curtains physically moving faster or moving slower. The curtains will always move at the exact same speed regardless of the shutter speed. The shutter speed is an indication of the size of the gap between the curtains. So at 1 250th of a second on this camera, the two curtains open, and then for a very brief moment, the entire film frame is uh, open to the, to the scene using a flash, the flash will go off, bounce back, hit the film, and then the second curtain will come in behind it. If you're shooting at 1 50th of, 1 15th of a second, it'll open, there'll be a really long pause there, and then it'll close again. But if you're shooting at, let's say, 1 4,000th of a second, it'll open, and then the second curtain's gonna come along right behind it. So if you used a flash at 1 4,000th of a second, what would happen is that you get an area of the film that's exposed and then everything else would be dark because the shutter curtains would block the flash from reaching the film that's behind the curtains as they're traveling. So that's why 1 250th is the fastest shutter speed that you can use for a flash. Okay, here, here we are looking through the viewfinder. There we go. In the uh, side there is your metering switch, or meter indica indicator. And right now it's telling us we are way underexposed, now overexposed. Pro oh, properly, ex a little bit overexposed. Uh, that's slightly underexposed. And so there, there we go, that's a proper exposure. So to get a proper exposure, what you need to do is have the meter over on the side show a dot. If it's showing a, just a dot, you're, pro you're at a proper exposure. If it's showing a minus, you're underexposed. If it shows a plus, you're overexposed. If it shows a dot with a plus or a minus, you're close enough, you're almost at proper exposure. On the other side of the viewfinder, you can see that there is a shutter speed indicator that changes with the shutter speed setting. At any rate, uh, this is getting those viewfinder shots is a lot harder with my new D camera than with the uh, K3. So that's what the viewfinder shows. When you look through the viewfinder, you're seeing everything at 93 of you're seeing 93% of what the film will see, and you're getting it at 86% of the size that the uh, film will see it. One, other, one last function to take a look at real quickly is going to be the depth of field preview lever. And what that does is, as you're looking through the viewfinder, it stops the aperture down, so you can see approximately what the depth of field is going to look like in your, in your uh, photo. That is a... Uh, Unfortunately, because this camera does not have a metering pin that allows NAI lenses on it, you can't mount NAI lenses, which means you also cannot use this for a, as a, uh, a way to obtain a, a meter reading with NAI lenses. Putting an NAI lens on this camera will break the meter linkage. So let's put all of that together and take a picture with this camera. So the first thing you're gonna do is frame what you want to take a picture of. You're going to look at it through your viewfinder and look here's this camera on this blue background. This is what I want to take a picture of. Great. And I want it to, I want to put the camera right there. Okay, great. Now it's framed. The meter says that I am right now underexposed. Okay, uh, that's, that's too slow of a shutter speed. Let's go back. 
And let's open up this lens a little bit. Okay, now, great, that's a proper exposure. In order for your meter to run, the lever has to be popped out. So anyway, now we know what we have as our, as our shutter speed and aperture setting. We're going to take, we're going to finalize the focus, make sure we get exactly what we want to have in focus. Take the picture, advance the film. That's the process of taking a picture with these cameras. It's pretty straightforward. They are uh, really user-friendly cameras. But let's say we wanted to take a double exposure. Okay, so we're going to take a double exposure and we know that 1 1 and f5.6 is a proper exposure setting to get a proper exposure on our film. If we're going to take a double exposure though, we need to have half the light go to the film so that we don't overexpose it. You can adjust the aperture down a stop. Uh, I suggest not doing that because that'll adjust your depth of field. So with double exposures, I tend to adjust them on the shutter speed dial. So I'm going to set it up to 250th, that's half the light. So if we take two exposures at 1 250th, that's the same as one at 1 1 25th. Take the first photo, use the double exposure dial here. We're going to pull it in as we advance the film. And the film lever is going to cover this as we advance it. So we'll just hold it until the film lever pushes our finger out of the way. Now we take our second photo and we advance the film. One thing about cameras is that, many cameras, is that it takes a couple of clicks for the, of the, of the uh, film sprockets for the mechanism to re-engage. So what you'll want to do is put your lens cap back on your camera, take a dead frame and advance it one more time and that prevents the film from overlapping so that your double exposure doesn't have part of the next frame on it. But it's a pretty simple procedure. Hold the lever in place, advance, and if you want to do a triple exposure, you can. You just have to adjust the shutter speed one more setting for your triple exposure. There you go. That's how to take a double exposure. So that is the Nikon FM2. If this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know I'm on the right track and that I'm producing content which is useful to you. If you have questions or th thoughts about this camera, please leave them in the comment section and I'm more than happy to address those. I'm pretty responsive about uh, getting back to, to comments. If you'd like to subscribe to find out when I have more videos being released, by all means, please do. And uh, if you are an amateur photographer who's taken photos with the Nikon FM2, feel free to share a link to your work in the comments section. And one last thing, thank you guys for watching and take great photos.